How's it guys? In today's video, we are going to have a look at all of the settings that a basic TIG welding machine has. Now specifically today, we are looking at the Thermomax Pro TIG 200 AC-DC, but not to worry if you don't have this exact model of machine. Basically across all of the TIG machines, they have very similar, if not the same settings. So hopefully you still find the video useful. Now, if you do, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think. It's always great to hear from you guys. In a previous video, we did unbox and have a look at all the accessories that this machine comes with. If you missed that, there's a link in the description. I'll also put a card up on screen. Hopefully your device is displaying the cards though. Um, coming up, <laughs> hopefully soon in the future, we're going to do a teardown of this machine. Have a look inside just to see how well it is built. That said, welcome back to the Burden Builds Garage. Let's get started. So to the beginner, all of these settings and features on the various TIG welding machines may look pretty complicated, but it's actually not. Once you know the basics, it's fairly simple. Now to get started, the right thing to do is probably to read the manual, so we'll just get rid of that and jump right in. Oh yeah, and a sub to the channel would be really awesome. Running through our mode selector here, we've got six modes and we can just uh, push this little button over here and we'll cycle to the first one and this is our normal AC square wave TIG welding mode, I think most of us are familiar with that. Then the next one here is just the AC pulsed welding mode. The next one, number three, is our DC, straight DC TIG welding. And the next one down is our DC pulsed mode. And then the last two uh, is our AC MMA or arc welding mode. And uh, the very last one is just our arc welding mode in DC. So just a simple, uh, six mode selections that we can make. Moving over to the right, uh, that's this section over here. This is our parameter and alarm zone display. So this is where we're gonna see all of our exact uh, settings that we've been doing. And uh, there's four displays that we're gonna be able to see here. That's either our amps, our time, our percentage, or our Hertz. Um, those will be displayed relative to whatever setting you are changing. Then the next thing here is voltage. So we can cycle over to that. And that is gonna be our, our welding voltage. voltage. Further down, uh, number three, come on, there we go. Uh, that's this section over here. This is gonna be one of the 20 modes that this machine has. So you guys are probably familiar with uh, the 2T and 4T functions. Um, this machine has got 20 of those variations. It's got 2T, 3T, 4T, and a various uh, a couple of others which we're not gonna get into at the moment. And then if we move down to group we can see it defaulted back up there after after a set amount of seconds if we go down to group and it's uh, selected one over here these are your group settings so uh, we can store all of our specific settings that we want into one of five groups we'll get into that uh, just now then uh, del well, below here is our alarm display zone so this first one being over current the next one is being over temperature obviously those little lights that will come on and then the next one is low voltage or high voltage so if the machine goes below 190 volts or above 100 uh, above 250 volts then that little uh, over volt light will will come on when we want to change various values we can use our parameter selection knob that's this one over here and you can see as I rotate it clockwise uh, in this case this is the the current that we're in now at the moment the current is increasing and you rotate it anti-clockwise and the current will decrease now this knob is a rotary encoder it doesn't have a start and a stop um, so you just carry on turning it until you get to the desired setting or value that you want Moving down to the next part here, this is our uh, TIG parameters zone, so we can see what we're setting up, at, you know, the various settings that we're making really. Um, now you guys are probably familiar with this if you're familiar with uh, TIG machines, if you're not then uh, yeah, we might have to touch on uh, the manual and maybe you'll have to watch a couple of videos or two. But uh, just to recap over here, we are in DC TIG mode and uh, to cycle through all these various settings we've got uh, left and right arrows here. So if we just go to the beginning, this first little light here uh, displays our pre-flow gas time. So currently it's set on 0.5 and then we can adjust it as we need to. The next one is our initial current and we can see now it's set on 30 amps. So um, as the arc starts, it's initially going to go to, to the 30 amps. Following that, um, it's going to ramp up to our peak current, which we'll see next. And this is currently set at one second. So we can set that to whatever we want to really. 
Then the next light is going to be our peak current, 92. I mean, we can set that to 100 amps or whatever you guys want to set. Uh, the following thing is our ramp down time in seconds. So you can see it's set to one second. And then we've got uh, what um, these guys refer to as our pilot arc current. So this is basically where the current is going to drop down to after you, you know, you've finished welding. And last but not least here, we've got our post flow gas. So you can see it's set to 2.5 seconds, fairly simple. These next two, oh no, I shouldn't say next two, but the next four here on the bottom, um, you're going to be setting this side in pulsed mode and this side in your AC mode. So let's move over to that. You'll notice that if we carry on cycling through, we can't actually get to any of these bottom settings. And that's because we are just in the normal direct non uh, pulsing TIG mode. So if we move over to the pulsing uh, DC TIG mode, then we can access these bottom two settings. Now the first one that is illuminated at the moment is our pulse frequency and then the next one here is our pulse duration ratio. Just going back to our pulse frequency, uh, that is how quickly the pulses are going to happen. 20 times a second, 50 times a second, you can decide and set it over here. Then uh, next let's move over to the left, no wrong way. Um, so now we go over to our pulse duration ratio. So this is the ratio of our peak current to our base current and we can see that Here's our peak current setting over there, and this is going to be our base current setting over here. So it's currently set at 50%. Now what that means is that um, for 50% of the time uh, we'll be at peak current, and for 50% of the time we'll be at our base current. Then if we move that down to, let's say, I don't know, 20%, uh, then for 20% of the time we're going to be at our peak current, and for 80% of the time we are going to be at our base current. And we can put that back to 50 not too important. And if we continue cycling through, uh, something that we didn't get to just now was this little light down here, our base current. Because remember, when we are in a straight non-pulsed DC TIG, uh, then there's no base current setting, it's just our peak current. But now that we are in a pulsed setting mode, uh, we've got a base current setting of let's say 30 amps in this case, and we've got a peak current setting of 200 amps. I mean, we won't be, we won't be welding at 200 amps, so, so I don't know, somewhere around 100 amps mark too. And then if we move over to our AC welding up at the top, mode number one, uh, we can also cycle to these two over here. So if we cycle and we carry on going around, the first one that we can see here is our AC frequency and the next one is our cathode current. Now you guys might um, know this more as your AC balance or your AC cleaning. And moving back here, our AC frequency, this is just the frequency that we are welding at in our AC mode. You can see that we can't get to any of these uh, currently. So if we go back, see it just goes back to our post flow setting and that's because we're not in pulsed mode. So if we go over to uh, AC pulsed mode and we carry on scrolling through, now we can access the two pulse mode settings. Moving over to the right uh, to our MMA parameter setting zone, uh, we'll also, we won't be able to see anything here at the moment because we're not in the, um, the MMA or the arc welding mode, that's these two on the bottom. So if we just cycle through to that, we can go through to the DC arc welding. Uh, now we can see our light is illuminated. So this is our arc welding current, just that's the current that you guys are um, used to using. And then we push our little arrow here to cycle through, we can set our arc force, we can also set our ignition amperage and our ignition time. And this is just something that uh, gives us a nice little kick, a nice little boost in current uh, to get that arc going. But we're not going to talk too much about this because generally we, most of us are interested in the TIG functions. And the last setting over here, this is our foot control selection zone. So currently I don't have the, the foot pedal plugged into the machine, it's just the torch. But when we do have the foot pedal plugged in and we want to activate that foot pedal, then we can just activate it. And you can see nothing wants to activate and the reason for that is because we are in arc welding mode. So let's just say we go back to another TIG mode and then we try and activate it and we can see that our foot pedal is activated. And to disengage it or to, <laughs> to turn it off, there we go. The last thing that we are going to talk about is the memory or group function on this machine. Now it's quite a handy feature especially if you are doing repetitive work and you are often changing your settings but you need to cycle back to the previous settings that you used. So what that means is that whatever parameters that we set over here we can save that in one of five groups. Now those groups can be accessed by pressing the down arrow and we are currently in group number one but we can cycle to group number two, three, four and five. 
what we'll do is go back to number one. The machine will automatically save these settings or parameters once you've made them, but just bear in mind that you need to leave the machine on for more than three seconds or operate it in order for it to save. So this initially caught me out where I would make the setting that I needed and then turn the machine off straight away and then come back the next time and that setting is not there and I was wondering what is going on. So just keep that in mind, leave the machine on for more than three seconds when you make your setting and then it'll be automatically saved. The machine also allows us to save five different groups of settings in each of the operational modes. So as an example, we are in DC mode and as I showed you, we've got five different groups of settings that we can save. If we had to cycle up here to our AC, normal AC square wave TIG mode, we can also save another five different lots of settings in that. And that has got nothing to do with the, the five groups that we saved in our DC TIG mode. So we can almost say that we can save up to 30 different lots or groups of settings. And that is quite a nice feature of this machine. And there we have it not so complicated well at least on the surface i guess we'll have to learn over time all the little tips and tricks now there is one function that i forgot to mention and that this machine has and many other machines do have but just check on your machine before you buy it and that is a spot welding function which is quite useful it's actually one of those 20 operating modes i mentioned earlier so i guess all that is left to do is for me to learn over time how to now weld properly well, guys that's it thanks for watching please like subscribe comment all of that good stuff, it's always awesome to hear from you. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.